made a special recognition to the angel of the house, Pastor Komado and his family. I'd also like to honor all the gifts of the church, their different offices and functions tonight in the name of the Lord. And special appreciation to all of us who are guests in this wonderful evening. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to thank God tonight for the privilege and the gift of life and the gift of salvation. Once again to be requested by a dear brother of mine, Kumaru, to, to come and be part of this great work that the Lord has laid in his heart. I remember very well we had an opportunity a few years ago to finish that to live in the tent where we preached Christ crucified. Praise God. Bazarone, I do not want to be amongst those who be considered as those who delayed us. Lest some of us tomorrow say we are not able to come to church. I always tell them in church. One of the most difficult things we face as men and women of God is to prepare for a Sunday. And what then defeats your heart is when you come to church or just on your way there you receive SMSs or WhatsApp saying, for this I'm not able to make it. I won't be coming to church. That is very disheartening when you're thinking what the Lord has laid in my heart must be heard by everybody in the house. So I don't want person to send WhatsApp messages to their pastors saying they're not able to come. There are three things, Bazana, that the enemy has attacked the church with in these last days. One of them is around sexuality. I am a scholar of the end times. We call it eschatology. If you understand what is going on in the church today, the reason why there's a conversation around sexuality is because there's an attack in the church. No wonder we're made to invest time talking about issues of sexuality, gender issues, and all that. Because the enemy wants us to change our focus and our conversation. The second issue that the church has been attacked on is around offering and money where the enemy has made sure that he confuses us in how we have a belief system around offering and money and we invest time in the arguments around the authenticity of giving and the money around the church and then the last one is the actual return of the Lord the devil has silenced the church about the end times to the point whereby we no longer tell the people that Jesus is coming yet he is coming and his coming is so near it can happen at any time. Amen. So these are the three main issues that the enemy has attacked the church on. But today I want to talk about one of them. And we see if God can give us understanding. The greatest mistake I can make Kumaro today is to motivate Basel to give. If I've come to motivate you to give, I would have failed why I'm here tonight. Motivation is but for a moment. But the revelation becomes permanent. The greatest thing I must achieve is for you to walk from a dimension of revelation when it comes to giving in the house of the Lord. Because if I motivate you tonight, tomorrow you shall not be motivated. But if you begin to walk under revelation, any day is a day of opportunity because you are walking under revelation. Praise God. So I'd like us, I know some of you have your Bibles on your gadgets, if you have quickly the book of Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. And the Lord spake, from verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Praise God. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Once the Lord spoke, it changes the dimension of what he's going to talk about. We're in a season where there are things we have done which God has not spoken about. And we have successfully tried to do them to the point whereby it, it becomes as though it is successful, yet there's no word that has come from the Lord. 
So when I'm reading, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses. I was excited when food is Kumano shared where the journey of where he comes from with where we are today. The Lord spoke in 1995. You know, when you are saying you are doing internship at Correctional, you confuse some of us. Intention but correction and is relative. <laughs> but intention or not, the Lord spoke at correctional and gave him something he had to be. Praise God. Verse 2 says, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. They bring me an offering. Tell the children of Israel they must bring it to me. Yeah. So the foundation based on of our revelation and understanding is whenever we are called out to give, we must understand we are giving him the offering. He's the one who has called for the offering. In the same verse, he only says to Moses, yours as Moses is just to receive it on my behalf. Otherwise, it is being given to me as God. Yeah. In the past few months, God began to deal with me, Bafundis. I was having a, I was making a mistake, but it was a very spiritual mistake. When I get into the church, one of my prayers would be, Father, I welcome you in this place. I would religiously pray the prayer, Lord, you are welcome in this house. Until God began to give me understanding of Matthew chapter 16, where Christ says, after Peter has a revelation that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus says, Peter, upon the rock of your revelation, I will build my church. I will build my church. So the word said to me, you can't welcome me in my house. It is I who must welcome you into my house. The reason why some of you are welcoming me, it is because they are your houses. They are not mine. You have begun to be the Christ that Jesus has spoken about in Matthew chapter 24. Where he says, in the last days, some will come and be like Christ. So that is why you are able to say, you are welcoming me into your house, yet I am building my house. And Christ says, the house that I am building, the church that I am building, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. One of the reasons why in some of our churches we are fighting tooth and nail is because we have built our own churches. The one that Christ says he is building, he says, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then he further says later on, Peter, this church that I'm building, I'll then hand over the keys of the kingdom of heaven to the church that I have built. Whatever they bind on earth, heaven will pay attention. Whatever they choose to set loose on earth, heaven will follow the Lord. But it is a church that I, Christ, am building. Come on, my brother. I always tell them in my church, the day you want me to die, or if you hate me so much, worship me. The day you want God to kill me, worship me. There's only one man who must be worshipped. It is the God who is in heaven. I always tell them, Basarwana, if you want to destroy what God has laid in my life, worship me. Come on. 
you and I go for fair. The day I hear your church members are worshiping you, I'll slap you. <laughs> enough is enough. We cannot allow our colleagues and our brothers and sisters. We, we should be our brother's keepers. This is not ours, Kumalo. It's not. You know, I always honor someone who started a church. I used to serve in a denomination. For 18 years, I've been personally denomination until I was there to start uh, a new one. Until someone walks through the church and starts to work, I, I, I respect people who started works. Or have been led to start churches. It's a challenging journey. And then the temptation comes there to say, because I was privileged to be sent to start a work, I then take it to be mine. <laughs> and as I walk that journey, but on them coming and worshiping me, honoring me, and giving me all that they give me, my mind subconsciously begins to say, This is mine. And as my mind begins to go that route, I see the people worshipping me. I see them giving me all the glory and the honor. There's a verse that begins to fade which says, I'm a jealous God. I shall never share my glory with anyone. It begins to fade and we begin to say it's in the Old Testament. It's, it's an old covenant. It's a small verse that remains that I'm a jealous God. I share my glory with no man. But on the message, yes, I beseech you, if you want this man to reach to heaven, do not give him any glory. He's just a servant. A problem when you give men like him the glory, the day he passes on, the church dies because it was his it was in the Lord's but those who always say Father you've given me the grace Lord it's an honor and a privilege to serve in leading your people who am I to be honored by heaven thank you Lord what God does he says this servant of mine when he's no more because this is not he, but mine. He shall be there beyond. So God says to Moses, tell the people of Israel, they must bring the offering to me. When not Moses will just receive it, but they are bringing it to me. Acts chapter 5, Bazalwane, it talks about Ananias and Sapphira, a very wonderful couple who the church, the body of Christ in, in, in Jerusalem at that time, just had the grace. Your people were sending what they were blessed with and giving into the heart of the Lord. So this couple sees others giving. And they feel they want to be counted among the pack. They decide to sell one of their properties. And as they receive the money, they discuss that no, let us not take all of it to the church. But when we get to the church, we will tell them it is all of, we'll tell them it is all of it. There's a statement that the apostle makes when Ananias gives the first portion. He says, Ananias, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? What Peter was saying was, the giving you are giving is not just to man. The Holy Ghost himself is witness to your giving. So as we offer, that is why my mistake I can make is to motivate you to give. I can't do that. Motivation is not sustainable. You need to walk from revelation. When we are giving, as we are going to start giving tonight, let us give with understanding we are giving to the God who created the heavens and the earth. Each year less is just a vehicle to receive what we are giving the Father. Someone will say, the economy is bad. We can't afford to give. 
the book of Corinthians, Paul talks about a church, the churches in Macedonia. He says this church was going through a very difficult economic situation. But because they had revelation, they gave out of their poverty. They gave out of their need. Because they knew who they were giving. In the scripture we've read, just to summarize it because of time, the reason why God says Israel must give to him is because he says to Moses, I then want you to build a tabernacle for me. The tabernacle, I then God will be my place where I come and stay with you. Bazarana, I know we've been told that the more we give, it's the more we're going to be blessed again. Amen, Bazarana. The more we give, it's the more we're going to be blessed. Amen. When we give in the kingdom of God, it is not for the blessing, but it is to establish a tabernacle where God will then live amongst us. Then the blessings of cars, houses, clothes, promotions, jobs become an overflow of the intention of our giving. So when we give, we are not giving only to be blessed, but we are giving to establish a tabernacle for God to be amongst us. Now when God is amongst us, he comes with the full package of his blessings. That is why he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And anything else that you are in need of shall come after you have caught the kingdom. So as we are giving Bazana to this beautiful structure, each year that wants to build, we are saying, as the body of Christ, Hey, Gulungulu, you have given us an opportunity to make sure Usumalia Duma, there's a tabernacle where you shall come and abide in the community. Therefore, we are honored to partake in such a great ministry, in such a great kingdom. Therefore, Father, all you have given me, I give back to you. But if you give from a point of motivation, without Kononan Shriki Palima, I will give you what you like give in my church tomorrow. But you must remember that you are now operating from a kingdom mentality. Wherever the work of God is being promulgated, it is a privilege for me to invest. Lastly, if you want to operate and give it from a revelation point of view, you must always view yourself as a shareholder in the kingdom. There's what you call a stakeholder. <laughs> a stakeholder is where you all have a common understanding of a common issue. But what happens, you always come and meet on the common issue and you part ways. Stakeholders, some of them are bound or are connected by what we call MOUs. Those who know legal issues, they say it is a non-binding agreement. Yeah. There's then what you call a shareholder. A shareholder doesn't come and go. But a shareholder once is lodged into the shareholding of the entity, remains there on a permanent basis. Yeah. He's the one who stands with the entity in times of storms. When the economy is thriving, the shareholder enjoys the dividends. And when the, the economy has gone down, the shareholder cries when it is declared there are no dividends. He cannot run away. He is a shareholder. Please, do not be a stakeholder in the kingdom of God. Please, be a shareholder. The book of Psalms says some have sold in tears. 
but time comes where they shall reap in joy. We're going to give tonight. And I ask that as we give, we're not giving Kuma. I see a Kulema. But what we are knowing, we are giving the Father through you. And we are charging you go and build his tower. Because he wants to come down and occupy that place. And once he's there, Maliatuma shall never be the same. He shall remove himself. So It is painful to lose members in a church. But the greatest pain that can never be him is when God Himself leaves a church. We can remain and be a thousand in the house but miss the most important person in the house. So I charge you, he must not leave the house. Now as I never said I worship a woman who is in the there's no time to waste, but we must all go to heaven. Jesus is coming back. So I'm going to call us up to the house. I'm going to call us up to the house. Down <laughs> Some of us shall come as the right reverend to him and the right reverend. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes and pray. Father, we are honored. We are privileged to serve such a father like you. Father, we thank you tonight for such a privilege and opportunity to come into your presence. Father, we receive your word with all humility. Your word, Father, shall never come out of your mouth and return to you void. Yes. Lord, I pray, continue ministering in our spirit. Give us revelation. We are honored, Baby, to partake in your great kingdom. Now, Baby, look, Sebedi, before us, you've laid the vision in your son. Father, as we partake as shareholders, receive our giving in the name of Jesus. Baby, see, we are praying for this great work you have laid so many years ago in his heart. May the enemy 
never have a foothold to deceive him to be proud. But may he remain humble knowing that he's just been privileged to have this vision and to carry it forward. But in your tandas, as we begin to give tonight, as we make pledges tonight, Father, I pray that our giving may be a sweet aroma before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You said, Baby, to Moses, he must tell them to give from the willingness of their hearts. Father, I pray that may we give out of the willingness of our hearts. May all those who shall give willingly receive willingly from you. Father, we bless you and we glorify you. Lord, seven you was a GLS shall not regress but shall progress. Eka men liga ches. Si a me mete la sis. Lokalo angulungu lugia fixo a me gulungu le tene. When you, you place a vision, you always make a provision. Wa koba belo msebe da usi wa kuma. Wa koba belo msebe da usi wet. Si si geba be jemo ba ume wa. Yenda chalo mo su kulis. Usi mi se mos. U provide le mos. So Father, be glorified tonight. Be magnified in this place. Christ, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.